Israeli officials have ordered and told nearly half of Gaza's population to move out of that region, the northern region, to the south, but Hamas is urging them to stay in their homes. Israel has also asked the Palestinian Red Crescent Society to evacuate its hospital in Gaza City, but the organization says it won't because of a mandate to help the sick and the wounded. Earlier today, I spoke to the director general of the Red Crescent Society about the work his team is doing on the ground in Gaza. Marwan Jelani, thank you for joining us this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You're in uh, Ramallah in the West Bank. I I wonder what you're hearing from your staff on the ground in Gaza right now. Yes, I'm at the Palestine Red Crescent headquarters, which is in Ramallah, West Bank. Uh, we have a an emergency, the central emergency operations room is in Ramallah, and another one is in Gaza. The two operation rooms are in constant contact, receiving information and, and issuing reports almost every four hours on the situation on the ground, and I am in direct contact with the with our people on the ground both in gaza city and also in in the south of gaza strip in khan yunis we have a our headquarters is, is in gaza city together with with a big hospital uh, in the city and then another another hospital in khan yunis also with a big a big headquarter in in the south of gaza and, and what are they? Yeah, what are they seeing there? What are they seeing in those hospitals? Well, they are seeing the most horrific humanitarian catastrophe that we have ever been forced to deal with. We have been through many wars, many cycles of escalation of violence. Uh, this is this is this is unbelievable. This is horrific. This is on a scale that we have never seen before. In terms of the vast destruction of a huge area of the Gaza, from the north to the south, the whole of north of Gaza is has been flattened, including in the center of the Gaza city, plus all the areas around the, the, the border area, many areas in the south, in Rafah city, Khan Yunis, refugee camps in the middle uh, across the whole it it is it is very difficult to describe yes. the, the the vastness of destruction but you can see it in cameras you can see yeah. it through the satellite images I, I, and I, and the, yes I was just going to say, I understand the Israeli army told your staff to evacuate the Al-Quds hospital in, in Gaza City, and they, they are not going to leave uh, because they want to do their jobs. H- how concerned are you for how they do that, given what might occur over the next number of hours and days? Look, this, this is not a very easy decision, not for any, any person who is in, in a position of responsibility. Uh, to be able to to make a decision that would affect the lives of thousands of people. This decision does not only affect the lives of our staff and volunteers. This decision affects the sick and the wounded who are in our hospitals. This affects about, during the day, we have about 2,000 people who are uh, sheltering in the hospital and in our headquarters, which are in the same building during the night this number reaches to 5000 people so any decision to stay or leave affects those people mm-hmm. our decision considered the following first our capacity to move the sick and the wounded we have no capacity to move the the sick and the wounded including children in incubators uh, if we move those, it is, as WHO said, could be a death sentence to those people. Secondly, we cannot leave 5,000 people behind in our hospital, in our headquarters, and just evacuate. We have communicated this through the International Committee of the Red Cross to the Israeli authorities. We have communicated, again, although they, they have the coordinates of our hospital, and above all, We are a medical mission and a humanitarian organization that is protected under international humanitarian law. 
yeah. asking us to leave is in itself a violation of international law, uh, of an international law. Not to mention the threats and the calls and the constant intimidation and harassment. How 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 can, how can you even say? I, I understand all that. It sounds like a really traumatic experience for people in the hospital or sheltering there. How are those people doing? Given that there is, from what I understand, almost no water left, and certainly uh, power and electricity is also a problem. It, it, this is this is a huge issue now. This this yesterday we had to send bread, just bread from the south of Gaza, from Khan Yunus, into Gaza City, because there, we had no food either to feed our staff and volunteers, nor to feed all those people. So we we had asked our colleagues in the south to get some bread and, and, and transport it to the north. There is, there is a, a very critical now, reaching a very critical level of shortage of water and food, uh, making the whole situation really uneasy Mm -hmm. And people are, are 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 scrambling to find things to eat, to feed the children, to take care of the elderly, and so on. So it is reaching a very critical point. We have fuel only that would last, I think, between today and tomorrow. We were we were supposed to receive uh, uh, some fuel. We were all waiting for. We were told there should be an opening, and there should be relief sent through Rafah and also through the southern the southern entry point uh, today and but we we re, we are not hearing anything but we are prepared that the minute these borders are open that there will be relief sent to to our people in Gaza Marwan Jalani director general of the Palestinian Red Crescent Society you have a very difficult job right now thank you for making the time appreciate it thank you Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie says Canada is also working to get Canadians out of Gaza. There are about a